Seeing some foreboding signs in the sacrifice he was making, the soothsayer Spirina warned Caesar to be on guard against an impending peril before the Ides of March had passed. The assassination of Julius Caesar on the foreboding Ides of March in 44 BCE has made that date famous throughout history. A seer had apparently prophesied that something bad would happen to Caesar on the Ides of March, as related by the Greek writer Plutarch. Greetings, fellow time travelers. In this eye-opening episode, we venture back to the era of togas, laurel wreaths, and epic tales of Roman glory. And most importantly, how did the universe's prediction game suddenly level up, revealing how the seers, soothsayers, and ancient oracles eerily foretold Caesar's doom? So hit the like and subscribe button, and let's unveil how the past can offer glimpses into our present and future. Caesar passed the seer on as he headed to the theater of Pompey, where he would be killed, and quipped, The Ides of March have come, implying that the prophecy had not been fulfilled. The seer responded, Aye, Caesar, but not gone. In Shakespeare's Julius Caesar, Caesar had a similar experience with a soothsayer who warns him to beware the Ides of March. According to Suetonius, a credible Roman writer, the seer was named Sporina, and was a heraspex, a priest who read omens by scrutinizing the guts of sacrificed animals. Tullius Cimber, Caesar's brother-in-law who had been exiled, met the emperor at the Senate just as Caesar arrived. Other members of the cabal surrounded him in an expression of solidarity. Cimber grabbed Caesar by the shoulders and yanked down his toga, according to both Plutarch and Suetonius. A shocked Caesar said, "'Why, this is violence!' to Cimber." Ista quidem vis est. Casca pulled out a knife and made a slashing motion for Caesar's neck at the same time. As soon as Casca turned around, Caesar grabbed him by the arm. The words, Casca, you villain, what are you doing? are recorded by Plutarch. In his panic, Casca cried out, Help, brother! in Greek. Brutus and the rest of the group had joined in the attack within seconds. Caesar tried to escape, but slipped and fell as he was blinded by his own blood. The men continued stabbing him as he lay helpless on the portico's lower stairs. About 60 men, according to Eutropius, were involved in the murder. He suffered 23 stab wounds. A physician later determined that only the second wound to his chest had been fatal, as related by Suetonius. Scholars and historians disagree on what Caesar actually said in his final moments. Historiographer Suetonius disagreed with the popular belief that Caesar said, You too, child, in Greek, as his last words. According to Plutarch, Caesar remained silent and covered his head with his toga after recognizing Brutus among the conspirators. The most famous translation is the Latin, Et tu, Brut? Shakespeare's Julius Caesar includes the phrase, And you, Brutus? Sometimes known as, You too, Brutus? In the first half of the famous line, how are you, brute? So, Caesar must perish. Plutarch claims that after the assassination, Brutus made it like he had something to say to his fellow senators before they all ran for the exit. The group then marched to the capital while Brutus cried out to Rome, Our city! Our city! Romans! We have won our independence! As soon as word of what had happened began to circulate throughout Rome, residents hid in their homes and ignored them. Nearly three hours passed after Caesar's body hit the Senate floor before it was removed by other officials. Denarius of Brutus is often called an E.I.D. Mar, short for On the Ides of March, or Oedipus Martius. On one side is a bust depicting one of the assailants Brutus, while the other side displays a Pileus cap, or cap of freedom, between two daggers. There are thought to be around a hundred silver coins still in circulation, but just three gold ones remain. Slaves who had lately been set free would don the Pileus cap as a sign of their newfound independence. The Roman Republic's crisis came to a close with Caesar's death, which sparked the civil war that ultimately led to the ascension to the absolute power of Caesar's adopted successor Octavian, known as Augustus. Octavian, the great-nephew of Julius Caesar, was anointed Caesar's heir and proclaimed the first Roman emperor after Caesar's death in 44 BCE. He was given the name Augustus. Since Caesar was both the Pontifex Maximus, 
chief high priest of Rome, and a priest of Vesta Ovid, writing during Augustus's reign, paints the murder as a sacrilege. After Octavian's victory at the siege of Perugia on the anniversary of Caesar's death in 40 BCE, he had 300 senators and knights who had gone up against him under Lucius Antonius, Mark Antony's brother, killed. The executions were part of Octavian's campaign of vengeance following Caesar's assassination. The historian Cassius Dio and the biographer Suetonius liken the massacre, which took place on the Ides of March at the new shrine to the deified Julius Caesar, to a religious sacrifice. Imperator Augustus of Rome encounters Cornelius Cinna, who was involved in a plot to kill the emperor. Interestingly, in 4 CE, Cornelius Cinna, the brother of Julius Caesar's bride, conspired to kill Augustus. Augustus really pardoned Cinna and awarded him a seat in his ministry, despite the fact that he plotted to kill the emperor. There you have it, time travelers. The curtain falls on this eerily realm of historical forecasts and witnessed the astounding prescience of Julius Caesar in predicting his own assassination. We appreciate you tuning in, and make sure to subscribe to our channel for more exhilarating adventures through the corridors of the past. We wish that all of your future endeavors are as thrilling as a Roman conspiracy.